Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. On August 15, the General Administration of Customs of China and the Ministry of Commerce jointly announced the official start of export controls on some key materials. These include antimony and some superhard materials. After this export control, many people also thought of China's germanium and gallium export ban that began last year. Now, from a time point of view, the germanium and gallium export control ban has been in effect for a year. At that time, the United States and the West felt very uncomfortable with China's restrictions on germanium and gallium exports. Many foreign media have also reported on this matter in various ways, and many industry insiders believe that this will have a serious impact on the United States and the West. In fact, from the current situation, after China restricted the shipment of rare metal materials such as germanium and gallium, except for a small number of companies in the United States, the European Union, Japan and South Korea that have obtained shipping licenses and can import a certain amount of materials, other related companies have basically been completely cut off. In fact, the United States and the West are not completely unable to obtain materials such as germanium and gallium from other channels. After all, the United States has previously come up with the idea of recycling gallium from waste to meet domestic demand. In addition to China, there are other countries in the world that have rich germanium and gallium minerals. Although in terms of finishing technology, other countries except China lack sufficient technical and equipment support, so there is basically no ability to ship large-scale finished material products. However, some basic germanium and gallium material products are still no problem. For example, in the Rare Earth Alliance formed by the United States, Australia, the United Kingdom, and other countries, the United States and Australia have the ability to mine rare earths. It can even be said that in terms of primary rare earth products, the United States has always been one of the world's major exporters. It's just that after the United States exports these primary products, China imports these products, and after a series of smelting and finishing, they are exported back to the United States. It is precisely for this reason that many American experts believe that the United States Rare Earth Freedom Plan has actually failed. Germanium and gallium are core materials in many fields such as semiconductors, aerospace, and thermal insulation materials. The demand for germanium and gallium in these industries will definitely not be satisfied with some primary products. At present, the United States is actually facing a very embarrassing situation. Limited germanium, gallium and other materials must give priority to key fields such as weapons and aerospace. However, many American industrial chains also need these materials, such as the semiconductor chip field one of the pillar industries of the United States. This has led to a distribution problem within the United States, and many companies in the industrial chain want to get more support for germanium and gallium materials. However, the United States has searched around the world but has not found any effective alternatives. Today, the United States is still recycling gallium from waste and reusing it after a series of smelting. However, 
This method is obviously impossible to meet the internal needs of the United States. So many related companies in the United States have now closed down one after another. For example, some of the top photovoltaic manufacturers in the United States, as well as some solar manufacturers, have been affected and even directly announced their closure. This is actually the United States' own fault. When the relationship between the United States and China eased, China also showed goodwill to the United States in this regard. At that time, some American companies also obtained shipping licenses, but the United States immediately changed its face. Therefore, according to the information reported by the U.S. media in early 2024, China basically did not ship any related materials to the United States, while Japan and South Korea were only about one-third of the previous ones. Judging from the current situation, Samsung, a world-renowned electronics and semiconductor enterprise group, is also very uncomfortable now. This is actually not difficult to understand. In terms of materials such as germanium and gallium, as well as chips, South Korea's position is definitely close to that of the United States. Previously, South Korea, together with the United States, signed a relevant germanium and gallium material development agreement with Mongolia. Facing South Korea, although China has not completely restricted the export of germanium and gallium materials, it is impossible for South Korea to import them on a large scale as before. Many of Samsung's businesses actually need the support of these materials. Although Samsung has not reached the point of being cut off, it has also been greatly affected. From the current situation, it is very correct for China to restrict the export of germanium and gallium. It is not only an effective reciprocal countermeasure, but also conducive to the development of related industries in China. After all, although China has a large amount of reserves, rare metal materials such as germanium and gallium are still very scarce. If China continues to ship on a large scale, it is very likely that China will face a series of severe problems in a few decades such as the lack of related raw materials. It will not only affect this industry, but also have many negative impacts on subsequent industries and will also hinder the development of related technologies in China. Please like if you agree and welcome to forward, leave a message and share.